Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about production standards. How do you meet them? What are they? <laughs> um, what are some tips that I have? All right, so let us begin. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. I will start off by saying this. The setting that you work in is really the driver on what your production standard is going to be. If you are working in the inpatient side of the house, it is going to be vastly different. The number <laughs> is going to be vastly different if you are working on the outpatient side, right? On the inpatient side, I've seen them average two to three per hour. And they're talking about charts. Um, when you are working on the inpatient side, you are looking at the entire patient's stay. So all of their visits, all of, everything for that patient is what you're going to be looking at. That's why the number is so low because you're looking at whole records. Um, I have been in the outpatient setting the majority of my career. So because of this, my production standards have ranged. All right. Um, I have been on the profi side where my production standard was 60. And that was because I was actually abstracting the, the diagnoses and the procedures. And what that means is I had no pre-filled in um, codes or anything. I had to pull them all out myself. So because of that, they said, okay, well, because you're not working with something already, you're working on your own, we will lower the standard to 60. When um, I'm working in the clinic, uh, it's a little bit higher. And I have seen job postings, I will say this first, job postings that average between 85 and 150 per day. And now that is reasonable. Um, 150 is a little high, but sometimes if your clinic is doing a lot of the same thing and there's not like a whole lot of thought process going into it, it's okay to ask for a higher number. Uh, but because I work in a specialty clinic, they have agreed <laughs> that 90 per day is reasonable. That is the average that I am supposed to do to be able to meet the production metric, right? So what I do is um, I have a eight hour day and in this eight hour day, I have two 15 minute breaks. Every place is different. Some people work nine hours a day. Some people work 10 hours a day. Some people work eight hours a day. Uh, so really depending on where you are and if your facility has set break times and that kind of thing. So, but for me, I have two 15 minute breaks. So that makes this a seven and a half hour day. And I am supposed to average 12 encounters per hour. Now, an encounter in the outpatient setting is a clinic visit. For me, that's what that means. It is a clinic visit. So when the patient comes into the clinic and they're seeing the doctor and all of the information on that note uh, is what I look at in a day. For um, one encounter per patient per day <laughs> per provider. So I have to do 90 of these, right? And when I'm looking at charts, um, I'm looking at them in a way that is going to be efficient for me. Uh, I, because I have to do 12 average in an hour. Um, and it's in some hours I can get more done. Some, some hours I can get 20 done. Some hours I get 10 done. <laughs> it really all depends on what I'm reading. But uh, it, that gives me, with at 12 per hour, it gives me five minutes average per record to look at it. And, and when you're looking at these encounters, sometimes you can get through them pretty quickly. I always start at the assessment and plan, and that way I know what's happening, what was the end result, so I know what to look for. And that is how I'm able to get through. But you have to keep in mind that I have been a medical coder since 2008, so I have a few tricks up my sleeve <laughs> when it comes to production. So that is how I'm able to work my, my whole process um, throughout the day. I bring up my work queue. So I have a work queue. And in this work queue, um, I have all of my clinics and all of my providers. I have two clinics that are mine, uh, the orthopedic clinic and the podiatry clinic. All of the providers that I have between those two clinics, it's about 20 right now altogether. Um, so as I'm looking through this queue, all of their encounters that they've done from the day before and the day before that, they're all in this queue. So what I start doing is I start working uh, the queue. And the way that they want us to work it is basically by day. So you work 
um, the day before. And that is what you're seeing in the queue first. And it'll be that, you know, that's where you start at. Uh, for me, I don't work it that way. I do mine a little bit differently and only because it's, it's more efficient for me. So I basically break it down by provider and that's how I work. Instead of stopping and going in between different providers during the day, I pick one provider and I go. And that's how I'm able to knock out a, a lot of encounters and get everything done that I need to get done. So depending on your facilities processes, you may have to work your cues differently. Um, some people have just one cue and everybody works out of that cue and basically what you click on is what you get. <laughs> uh, in my instance, that whole clinic is mine and podiatry is all mine as well. So I get to work however I wanna start. Uh, we do have uh, error lists that we have to work through first though. And it's not necessarily that it's an error, but uh, if there's something on there that is conflicting because these um, these diagnoses and procedures are already pre-selected on a lot of them. And so basically what I'm doing is going through and making sure that the correct diagnosis is selected, the correct uh, procedure is selected. If it's not, then I either take it out and select the correct diagnosis or if I have to send a query, then I'll send a query. But, and that takes time, right? Uh, but I, I have gotten very efficient with my, like I said, my providers, so I don't really have to do a lot of queries anymore. If I start seeing that I'm having an issue with a provider, I physically go to their office and I'm like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> because something's going on with these records. <laughs> and uh, they're like, oh yeah, sorry, or, or the system or whatever. So we work it out that way. So that keeps my having to do any queries very low, all right? Um, so basically, I go and I uh, start working these cues. I start working these cues first, seeing if there's anything in there. If there's not, I move on and I start breaking down the day. I start working with providers that I know I can get through very quickly. <laughs> I can't do difficult encounters first thing in the morning because I will sit there and spin my wheels. Because to me, if I have something that's very complex, uh, because I have joint reconstructionists that I uh, code for. <laughs> uh, I have sports medicine surgeons that I code for. So some of this stuff gets very complex. And you have to pay attention because these are, people have accidents. They've had um, a lot of uh, other comorbidities that are affecting the provider's management of this patient. So again, having a 90-day quota... <laughs> Sometimes it works in my favor because um, on those days when it's really kind of tough to get through encounters quickly, uh, it's nice to know that, okay, it's just the average. Okay, so there's going to be some days that I don't always meet 90 in a day uh, because I've had a meeting. And for that, I get to take that time out of my production time. So anytime that you have a meeting, let's just say this meeting is one hour, you get to back that hour out of your production time. So for me, again, visiting that I'm at seven and a half hours with my two 15 minute breaks <laughs> out of the way, um, I'm at seven and a half hours. If I have a one hour meeting, that's six and a half hours. So my production standard, while it's 90, it'll lower because I don't have to account for um, one and a half hours of production time because that is the, it's taken out, that time is taken out. So um, it, then it, as they average the time, <laughs> then they'll see that, okay, yeah, she met 12 per hour. And if I don't meet 12 per hour, let's just say that I had a meeting, it was an hour, and for some reason I was a little bit slower because of the system or because it was really complex charts, um, then I will, I will have to make that up the next day. And, and it is possible to be able to make it up the next day. If you are a brand new medical coder and you're worried about meeting production standards, guys, I will tell you that every place that I have worked has always given me a ramp up period. Now people always ask me, Blue, what is ramp up? I don't know if it's a Texas thing because I thought everybody understood it, but <laughs> uh, when I went to conference, I found out before that people, not everybody knows what a chili dog is. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yep, 
yeah, that that was weird uh, when I found that out. That people don't always know like things like Funyuns. They didn't know what Funyuns were either, and I was like. Are you serious? Like, it's a chip. It's like the best chip ever. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I, um, a ramp up period means that you have a time when you start and you're brand new and they're not going to expect you to say, for instance, your production standard is 90 per day. They're not going to expect you the day that you walk in to be at 90. Okay. They're not even expecting that the next day or even the next week. Um, typically a ramp up period is 90 days. They give you 90 days to learn the systems. Basically that's what you're doing. You're learning the systems and you're getting used to the workflow and the work queue and learning how to do those things. Not that they're training you on how to code because they're expecting you to already know how to code based on the fact that you have passed a certification exam. And that was told to me by my uh, supervisor that when I first got here. Well, of course, I already knew that, but there was new people that were coming in who were asking to be trained in coding. And they were like, no, uh, when you pass your certification, it's, it's expected that you know how to code. There's a difference between asking a question about like, well, I'm kind of stuck on this one versus, hey, I need training. Because if you need training, that's something that you need to self-study on, right? Um, so I was just like, well, I'm glad I, <laughs> I've had some good training before, you know. So anyway, uh, but yes, so they're not going to expect you to hit production standards immediately right out of the gate. All right. They're going to give you time to warm up and to be able to learn the systems and to be able to get into a good rhythm. Now, the reason that some people don't meet their production standards is because they're on the phone. Um, I used to work in a room with 20 women <laughs> and a lot of them complained that they could not meet production standards. Um, and you saw them on their phone and you saw them talking and visiting. And so when they do that, it, the, the time just ticks, 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 tick away and you can't back that time out of your production, right? You can't, you can only back out time based on like a class that you're in or you're taking or if you're in meetings and things like that, that is something that is, is, I mean, understandable that you're going to have to back that time out. But if you're just visiting and, you know, going on and being on your phone, uh, guys, there's a time and a place for the phone. I, I don't believe in phones when you're trying to work. <laughs> um, I, I have a bad signal in my office anyway, so that's why you don't see a lot from me <laughs> during the day uh, because I'm not on my phone. It drives me crazy when I see people on their phone because you're supposed to be working and having your mind focused on what you're doing. And I mean, well, it's my kids and this and that. There's there's a, a time and a place for it. And also, I mean, if it's really an emergency, you'll know, right? Um, you'll, you'll be notified if there, if there was actually an emergency. But a lot of times you'll see people that they're just chit-chatting, like, you know, just normal chat when you should be reading and focusing. So that is one of the things that if um, you like to chit chat and talk a lot, make sure that you watch uh, how much time you're talking. If somebody keeps talking to you, you have to tell them you have to say no. Um, I've had to say no several times. And when I worked in that room with 20 women, the girls did not like it. <laughs> I would put my headphones on and I'd sit there in my little corner by the door <laughs> and everybody would walk on by and I would have my chair, my chair, my chair shaken and I'd have my hair pulled and they go, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, okay, I'm trying to work. <laughs> and to me, my focus is on my work because I have to pay attention to what I'm reading. I don't have an easy clinic. I've never had easy clinics. So I don't have a lot of the repetitive stuff where um, you get into some of those repetitive clinics, like you get into a, like an immunizations clinic then that's something different because that's a lot of the same thing over and over again. And I mean, you, you may have easy clinics like that, but uh, when you have difficult clinics, it takes focus. And I've gotten messages from people who say, well, Blue, I don't know how you do it because I don't even take breaks um, to, to, so that I can meet my, my production standards. Well, and, and it may not even be the person's fault. It may be just a lag in the system, or it may just be that they're really learning. Um, you will learn shortcuts after a while, like shortcuts, meaning 
when you see certain words and you're like, okay, that will trigger certain things for you to know, like how to look it up in the book or how to look it up in the encoder. Uh, it does get easier after a while, guys. And uh, for me, 90 is a, is a walk in the park. You know, I used to have 120 and that was difficult to sometimes hit, uh, but I was still able to hit it. So, I mean, again, there's going to be days when you're going to be able to fly through a lot of <laughs> encounters and there's going to be days when you're not going to be so quick. But the average is what you're looking at. So while you may be a little bit lower one day, say your production standard is 90 and you do uh, 80, well, then you can make up 10 the next day. Um, of course, you'll, you'll see those ones that are going to be difficult and those, you'll see the ones that are really easy. So you'll be able to pick up <laughs> the pace after a while. So that is something to know. When I worked at home, when I did some um, remote coding for a level one trauma hospital, um, there was a lot of, le a lot of, um, I did same day surgeries, right? So there was a lot of those same day surgeries that were left in the queue at the end of the day because <laughs> I would do this in the evening hours because I didn't like the, the day hours. So I would do this in the evening hours and I would be left with all of the really <laughs> difficult ones. And so I would let my supervisor know, hey, I had this one and there was, I mean, multiple uh, diagnoses, multiple injuries. So I did let my supervisor know when there was ones that were really complex. And so she was merciful <laughs> and she let me back out an hour because I had excessively uh, difficult charts and you know she got upset about it because she knew that there was people that were skipping in the queue um, because I was getting stuck with all of those she said you keep getting stuck with all of the really difficult ones that's not right so uh, she did uh, back some time out so that my production still looked like I was able to meet production standards because I was it just wasn't my fault that I was getting all of the really complex charts. <laughs> uh, but that's just something that you need to be upfront about with your supervisor. If you end up with something that is really difficult, hey, I had this really difficult chart. It was uh, really complex or whatever. Don't do that for every single one, though. I will say that. Uh, don't do that for every single one because then it'll just look like you're just making excuses. Okay. Um, the best thing that you can do is is work and get through the encounter as quickly as you can be accurate as as accurate as you can don't rush and just try to push things on through because you've been goofing off and you're just trying to hurry up and catch up so you can meet production standards the the job is very important your work is very important and these providers they deserve 100 percent of your attention the patience above all else deserve 100% of your attention because that is what you are there for. And that is what you're being paid for is to pay attention to what you're doing. Make yourselves sharper, make yourselves more high caliber so that when these patients are getting their bills for the services that the provider provided to them, it, it is accurate. Okay. So that is something that you always have to think about and always think about how you would want uh, to have somebody who cares looking at your encounters and coding them appropriately and not just pushing through what the provider selected. Okay. Because I do have, uh, in my clinic, the providers, they select the codes, but they don't always select all of the codes. And sometimes they don't select the correct codes so they can get close. <laughs> and some of them do select the correct codes, but they're not the coder I am. So that's why it's just like, okay, it's my responsibility to make sure that this is all good and, and well. <laughs> uh, but that is what I wanted to say about uh, production standards. Again, it's different everywhere. Um, but as you get more experience and as you get more practice, you will get faster. So don't panic right away. Um, as long as you know you're making a strong effort, all of the time that you spend in these records is showing because we have an electronic trail for every single encounter that we touch. So the second you open a record, it is timing you. It's saying, okay, the timestamp is now and however long you're in there. So if they see that you're in there a long time and they see the complexity of the record, then like, oh, okay, well, you know, that's understandable. But if you're, if you're in an easy encounter and you're just talking and, and joking with your coworkers because 
they want to talk and not let you work, <laughs> um, it's, it's not going to look good. If they have to do an audit and they see um, what your time looks like in all of these records. So always make sure that you get out of the record when you leave your computer. Um, or if you're going to be away from your computer for a long time, get out of the record. Uh, so that way you can, um, it's, it's not, you know, still counting those minutes that you're in the record. Okay. It's, it is about being aware <laughs> and conscious about what we have in front of us because we need to see things on an as needed basis. We don't need to be leaving encounters open um, where everybody, you know, is uh, hopefully you have one of those screen protectors that nobody can see but you uh, when you are coding. So that's just one of the things that I wanted to say. Uh, but yes, it, it, it does get easier after a while. If you find that you have a, if you're in a place uh, like these people that are working in the ER and they say that they have a 320 um, quota to do in a day. I mean, me personally, that's, that's just too much. I mean, and ethically, we have to code accurately. Accuracy first before production. I mean, there's no excuse for, for just, you know, careless coding. There's no excuse for it. Uh, I, I would look for something that would be more um, handle, you know, that you can handle a little bit better than that. Uh, because 320, that's ridiculous. And there's no quality there when the production standard is that high. At least that's my thought on it anyway. But yes, if you are in the inpatient or outpatient setting, the more that you spend studying on that particular specialty or whatever you're in, the faster you'll be able to get through. Uh, review your the diagnosis section for that uh, particular specialty. Um, like if, it's, if you're in the uh, orthopedics clinic, then you wanna review the musculoskeletal section and the injury section. So that way you can get more familiar. Same thing if you are in the podiatry clinic, okay? Uh, if you're in the cardio clinic, you wanna review those cardio uh, diagnoses so that way you can be more familiar. And reading through it is gonna make a lot more sense. Things is gonna go a lot faster, trust me. <laughs> There's a difference when you understand the language of the documentation versus, okay, I'm just trying to look for the correct code uh, versus, hey, I know I get what they're saying here. <laughs> Uh, at least, again, my advice. Uh, so if you found this video helpful, I hope that you will share it. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe already, I hope that you do uh, because I have new shows premiering at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time during the week, Monday through Friday. Um, and if you are interested in additional exercises for medical coding or medical terminology and anatomy, I have my Patreon channel. You can check it out. Um, the link for my Patreon channel is in the description box below. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hit that like button and I'll see y'all on the next episode. Bye.